Netflix has changed the game when it comes to how we consume content. And it's even changed the way we produce content as filmmakers. We all wanna be able to have our films and documentaries on the most renowned and recognized streaming platform in the world. But in order to do that, you gotta get that Netflix stamp of approval by using a Netflix approved camera. For those of you who have a Sony Venice or an Ari Alexa, yay for you. But for the rest of us who are trying to ball on a budget, it's important to make sure that you cover your bases and you have a Netflix approved camera without killing your wallet. So I took the time and I did the research and I went through the entire Netflix approved list and I found five Netflix cameras that you can go and buy right now in 2023 without breaking the bank. And we're gonna talk about the pros and the cons of each camera and why each camera might be the perfect camera for you. But before we get into this video, I just want to let you guys know that we are doing a giveaway for a Comica wireless microphone. And all you have to do to be eligible to win that microphone is like and subscribe to the channel and comment down below. Can you hear me now? And you will be eligible to win this microphone for free. No strings attached. The first camera that we're talking about today was an absolute banger back in 2014. And it was used on one of my favorite docu-series I have ever seen in my life, and that is Last Chance You. And the camera that we're talking about today is the Sony FS7. This is a 4K camera. It has a Super 35 sensor. It has 14 stops of dynamic range, built-in internal ND filters, and it can film up to 180 FPS. And you can buy this camera right now in 2023 for only $1,299 used on Adorama. This camera is a huge bang for your buck and for the price, one of my favorite cameras on this list. And yes, while it is used and it's a little old, you can still get a lot of mileage out of this thing and produce really great images like you're seeing right now in this Last Chance You documentary. Next, we have a camera from one of my favorite camera companies and that is Blackmagic. Now, I'm not sure exactly why, but for some reason, Netflix has only approved two cameras from Blackmagic. And the cameras that they have approved was the original Blackmagic Ursa Mini Pro and then the Ursa Mini Pro G2. However, I do think that they are in the process of approving the Blackmagic Ursa 12K and I don't know really what goes into their approval process and why it takes some cameras a little bit longer to get approved than other cameras. But right now, as it stands on the Netflix approval list, these are the only two cameras approved by Blackmagic. None of the pocket cinema cameras are approved. I don't know why. Now we're gonna explore both the specs of the Ursa Mini Pro, the original one, and then also the G2. But taking a look at the original Ursa Mini Pro, this camera has 15 stops of dynamic range, built-in ND filters, two XLR inputs, it shoots up to 60 FPS at 4K, and it has the ability to shoot ProRes and a ton of other codecs. And you could actually buy this camera right now, used, of course, on Adorama, which I'm not a huge advocate of buying used cameras because you never know really what's wrong with them. However, that's a great deal. And then let's talk about the G2 for a second, which is definitely an upgrade. It has the ability to shoot 4.6K at up to 120 frames per second. And then it has the ability to shoot in B-Raw, which is a raw codec for Blackmagic users. And the price definitely is an increase to $5,995. And I do think that that's kind of out of the price range for people that are kind of just getting into, you know, filmmaking or trying to get their first cinema camera. That's why I'm kind of grazing over this camera. I'm kind of unofficially putting this on the list. Now, the biggest cons of both of these cameras and anything with the Ursas is that it's a big bulky camera, especially when you rig it out and you use it for like a true cinema camera. Wouldn't necessarily call this a running gun camera. The other con about both of these cameras is that they're not great in low light. I will say that if you pump the ISO anything past 1600, you definitely start introducing a lot of noise into this camera. So if you are looking for low light performance and something a little smaller, this camera is probably not for you. All right, the next camera on our list coming in at number three is the Lumix BS1H. This is a 6K camera. It has a full frame CMOS sensor with dual native ISO, 14 stops of dynamic range, and it shoots up to 120 frames per second. And you can get this camera right now, brand new, for $2,497. However, there are a few cons about this camera. The camera doesn't have built-in ND filters, which is not a huge deal, but I think that if you're gonna spend anywhere north of $2,000, I think having built-in ND filters in 2023 is kind of a must, especially if you're gonna spend more than 2,000 bucks. The other con about this camera, and it might not be a con for a lot of you guys, but for me it is, is that it comes with a Leica L mount. And 
Most of my lenses are either EF or E mounts and I haven't used this camera specifically, but I will say that I'm not a huge fan of like the Panasonic UI. Like I, I personally think like the menu system and everything is just a little bit clunky. But again, like I haven't used this particular camera specifically. However, I do hear really good things about it and I've seen some really great footage shot on it. On paper, this camera looks amazing and brand new right out of the box for under $2,500 and you get that Netflix stamp of approval, that's definitely an interesting camera and definitely one to think about. This could be a great camera for you. The next camera on this list is a low light beast and it comes at such a tiny portable body that has quickly become a staple for indie filmmakers. And the camera that we're talking about is the Sony FX3. The FX3 has a full frame sensor, 15 stops of dynamic range, shoots up to 120 frames per second at 4K, incredible autofocus, and it performs really, really well in low lighting conditions. In fact, this camera has been used on Hollywood films such as The Creator because of its ISO and low light performance. And the fact that you get all of this in such a small and lightweight camera body makes it definitely one of the best cameras on the market, especially for independent filmmakers. Now the camera is a little bit pricey. It comes in at a price of $3,899. And with all things considered, it's really not a terrible price. The cons for me is the fact that this camera doesn't come with built-in ND filters. And I've never been crazy about the Sony interface and the menu system. I remember the day that I bought my first Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera and I was transferring over from a Sony a7S II. And I was like, thank God, man, because the menu of Sony, even after like a couple years of using it, I was still like learning little nuances about the menu and what you could do and what you couldn't do. And like, there was all these different rules on the Sony a7S II. And I don't know if it, it, it's still like that on the FX3, but like there was all these little rules, like in certain modes, you can't use certain ISOs. It's like, it drove me nuts. So that's one thing that really always bothered me about Sony and I hope they fixed it in this camera. However, every time I see footage from this camera or every time I hear about somebody using this camera, everybody always says the same thing. They say it's an incredible camera. The footage and the image quality that I always see out of this camera is absolutely incredible. Again, my only cons are it doesn't have built-in ND filters, which I don't know why Sony did that. Like they put it in the FX6 and the FX9. Why wouldn't you put it in the FX3? Maybe it's too small. Maybe they didn't want to make it too big. That kind of bothers me. Not a huge deal, but it bothers me. And then the other thing is the interface. Like I really just don't like the Sony menu system, but none of those are reasons not to buy this camera. You could easily get an ND filter. You could easily learn the menu system, just like everybody else who uses Sony and gets used to it. I just personally don't like it, but this is one of my favorite cameras on the list and definitely one that I recommend. I would definitely think about this camera if you want a Netflix approved camera, if your budget is around $4,000. I would honestly say right now, if I had like to start off as a filmmaker and I had 4,500 bucks, that's all I had to spend, I would get this and a lens and just wait to buy everything else. Because I, I, I truly believe that it could last you a, a good five years and five years from now, you can still have a really great camera that is super lightweight and portable. And worst case scenario, you buy an upgrade and this is a great B camera and it's Netflix approved. So that's my little rant on the FX3. Moving on to the next camera on the list. Finally made it to the last camera on our list and that is the Canon EOS 70. This camera has 16 stops of dynamic range. It has the ability to shoot up to 180 frames built-in ND filters, it can shoot 12-bit footage, and it has great low light performance. And every time I see footage shot on this camera, there's always a wow factor to it. And I have always loved the color that you get out of Canon cameras. A lot of filmmakers that I really love, and especially their color grading, use these Canon cameras. And the EOS 70 is no different. It's, it's an amazing camera. And one of the reasons why I put this on the list is because it really is like a cinema camera in such a small and lightweight body. However, in my opinion, it is a little bit pricey coming in at $5,499 just for the body. And that's why I decided to put it last on the list because price versus performance was a big deal on how I organized this list. And while I do think this is an amazing powerhouse of a camera, 
I think when you weigh it out, when I think to myself, I'm like, okay, well, this is $5,499. You're spending almost six grand on this camera versus the FX3, which I think besides the fact that it has a little bit more dynamic range on this camera and you know the built-in ND filters, which don't get me wrong, is huge, you could still just buy some ND filters and get very similar image quality out of the Sony FX3. So if your price range is anywhere between that 4,500 to like that 5,500 mark, if I was to make a recommendation, I would say go with the FX3. I think that all in all, what you're paying for versus what you're getting, I think that's probably the best bang for your buck. However, I really do love the idea of spending like $1,300 on the original FS7. I think that's an amazing camera and it's proven to shoot a ton of really great documentaries and you can get a really good image out of that for $1,300 and it's Netflix approved. You got something to think about. I think I think you definitely have something to think about. The only con with that is that of course it's used and you never know how it's gonna perform after it's been used for so long. But that being said, I think my reigning champion of this whole video is the FX3. These are not the only cameras approved by Netflix. There's a ton of them. Netflix has a whole list of them. And some really awesome cameras that I just wanted to run through really quickly are the Red Komodo, the FX3, and of course, the FX9, which are all amazing cameras. However, they are all north of that $5,000, $6,000 range which I wanted to keep it $5,000 and under. That last Canon camera came in a little bit above 5,000, but I thought that, that was still within a budget price range for a cinema camera that was approved by Netflix. Drop some comments down below. Let me know if you guys have any other cameras that you wanna talk about, any other recommendations that are not on this list that you could find for even cheaper than I have, or any new cameras that are being approved by Netflix. Drop them on the list. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Deuces.